I have found great pleasure in restoring and detailing older logos. So I was pleased upon visiting the Severn Valley Railway when stopping off at Bewley Station to find my favourite second-hand charity model shop was open. My main reason for going in was to pick up some items to become my father's Christmas presents, but while I was there I noticed some built white metal kits on the shelf behind the counter. I had a look through and picked up this working Great Western Railway Dean Goods 060 for only £42. That's a winner. Let's take a look at this Great Western locomotive and understand a little more about what we are looking at. Under finer inspection we can see what we have. Firstly it's a tender engine 060 loco designed by William Dean but in this case it was a model designed by Kesa or Kays as they came to be known. There is a good amount of weight to the model naturally because it's white metal which will aid all the running because it will push the tyres into the ground or into the tracks so that'd be great. It's been hand painted which I respect but I'd like to repaint it to suit my preferred view of the loco. The hot end of the loco has a moulded smoke box door handle, which we will upgrade. And the model was missing some of the irons, which the lamps would have slotted over. The handrail looks okay, but I think I'll probably leave this on. I don't need to mess around with it. The safety valve is also lacking some of the top detail on the top, so it's quite flat on this one. So we can probably make something on the 3D printer and draw up something a bit more detailed. The chimney looks okay. The hole only goes in so far. I don't think that's going to bother me. Cab side, we have a slope which accommodates the motor and the worm that goes onto the end of it that obviously works on the gearbox. This isn't representing a real one, but I think we can forgive this. It's that model. I don't want to completely convert the loco. I just want to restore it. The wheels look pretty good and the conrods are looking in the right shape, but their colour needs a bit of cleaning up it looks like there's some green corrosion on one of them also we are missing the brakes for the wheels so as we'd like to stop the loco we can add that on later but we'll figure that out as we go onto the tender there's a coal load there but i'm going to put my own in because i like to have that touch on it i need to add brakes but i'm not sure if i'm going to do it i might leave them off and just have them on the loco it doesn't bother me too much not having them on the tender the lamp irons are also missing so we can add them as well Great Western Railway's Dean Goods was a replacement for the Armstrong Goods after William Dean became the locomotive superintendent in 1877. He took over the design and Dean turned his attentions to Goods locomotives where he did what seems to be a very good job. He made 260 of the 23 class which then had various class names to it. The obvious difference over the Armstrong one was that the Dean Goods had inside frames only where the armstrong had double frames it's like an older version really the the armstrong the way that they did it back then there are other small improvements in various places over it but that's the physical one you can see the dean goods were kept around um, as they're very capable with the ability of because they have light axle loads allows them to go all sorts of places so that became invaluable for the railways even the armstrong goods uh, were seen running in the next century and i found pictures which has been quite cool and it says in 1928 and it's got one of them rocking on with some goods on the back back to our model and we take the body off and we put it with the tender in a bath of isopropanol alcohol and i'm putting it in there because it's going to hopefully get under the paint and take off the paint. I left it there for about five days because I had to go away with work and when I came back I had some scrubbing to do. Using an old toothbrush, tweezers, cocktail sticks, I was able to work my way through the layers of paint. Some of it was very easy but some of it was far more stubborn than I thought it was going to be and I ended up scratching some of the white metal underneath when removing it. But we can fix that later on with when we do the primary layers as well as some bits of filler. You can see bits of paint 
but that's in like the pits of the white metal so I think that's okay so it shouldn't show up when painting later on also when soaking as my friend Andy Sugden had explained um, it might become unglued in places or completely unglued because it looks like it softens the aerodite that was holding it together so now we're going to glue some of the items of the logo back together as well as add some details firstly we look at the top of the firebox and I want to glue that on and put an equal gap each side so the seam looks okay I'll be taking off that metal safety valve so I pop that out and cut it off and make a new hole I'll draw up a nice new one in a bit also the footsteps had fell off so I stuck them back on and as well as other places on the tender I had to glue other bits there adding the brass details for the front of the loco I added the lamp irons which are going to be stuck in place so just use some super glue to hold these all in place these come part of a etch by silver tay models and i've been using them for some time they're great i use them on all sorts of my logos the tender again we added the bits on and i added on all the little brass details and actually when i was working i noticed a deep scratch which i think was hidden under the paints previously so i'll fill that in where i can an area that most of the locos benefit from when you add details is the smoke box door handles. Really easy thing to do. You'll find even on locos that don't seem that old that you pick up that look like a modern loco, sometimes you have moulded in door handles, which I feel is a real shame because it doesn't take much to make it nice. But doing this is simple. First, I trim off and file um, carefully the face where the current one is sitting to make it flush. Be careful you don't go and lose the curvature of the door when you're doing it but once you've done this very carefully um, i drill a one millimeter hole to fit the little dart in place which is going to hold the handles after that's done i glue the door handles on one at a time and then the bit that protrudes from the dart we trim it off i actually lost some of the footage when doing this so you do the work and then you realize you hadn't hit record and there i was so i'd missed some bits so i'd got some of it but anyway i think you got the gist now this is done it's time for painting so first we need to primer it and i go for the vallejo uk bronze green which is close to the end color which means the final color coats can be reduced as we can reach the final color easier which is nice for me you don't have to keep adding more and more paint to get past a white primer color I mask the wheels of the tender to keep them free from the green paint because there's already bits of black on them and then sprayed both the tender and the loco with, with Rail Match Post 1928 Green. It's an acrylic paint and I give it two coats which was enough to get the coverage that I was after. Once it had dried thoroughly, I left it a whole day, so it goes hard. I painted the smoke box area, so that and the chimney, the cab roof, the buffers, the running plate, as well as inside the cab. That's all done in black, and I did this with a watered down black paint, so I get to keep the details, and I do two thin coats, as that's all that's needed. I did the same with the tender but I had quite a lot more of black to do in various places on this. 
After that dried, I moved to the red for the buffer beams. I used Vallejo's game colour selection and it was called Scarlet Blood and I find that's a more appropriate rich red than the flat red previously used, so I'm much happier with that. I needed to draw up the safety valve to go in place of the low detailed item that was there. I looked up pictures and diagrams and drew up one which turned out to be quite nice visually. Printing didn't take long as it was a small part and with a coat of gold paint which always looks brassy that finished it off nicely. We glue it in place and then add our whistles. The whistles on the models that I've seen look like there's a larger one on the right hand side and then a smaller on the left. The ones I had only had a fractional difference so I still put the larger one on the right. The cab is looking a little bare with all that black so I decided to paint it and um, I had some fun <laughs> and I painted the gauges that had the red handle and all the brassy bits and coppery bits. So that was fun, it actually didn't have a lot of detail on there so I didn't get to add too much. After this I can add the cab side plates which were from Fox Transfers and I picked 2524 as it's one that I saw in one of my books, it was a handsome looking loco, thought that's what I'm going to go for. With them on there I can then decide to put the transfers on the buffer ends uh, which also enhances the look of the loco because you've got the, the yellow writing on the red, it looks really smart. Adding crew. I was in two minds about this as there's that slope and I didn't really know how to make it look nice and I think really you're going to only see the loco from the side when it goes round so you're not going to spot it. So I used the original driver that was in there and I put a little bit of extra paint on him, made him blend in with another one that I had kicking around and I stuck him in place. I actually noticed that his hand was missing <laughs> after sticking him in but I thought I can fix that another time, we'll figure it out. With them in place, I give the loco a satin varnish. This is by Vallejo again. I thin it down slightly so it doesn't go on so white. Um, you get, what I notice is it's quite white when it goes and it can change colours of everything. So I thin it down and it looks good. So I did two coats of that in the end to then also protect the bits that I've already painted in the colours. Once dry, I added lots of coal to the tender. And I'll tell you a little secret, this is my favourite job when working on locos. I add the PVA glue first to the surface that it's going to stick to. And then after that I add the coal, which again is very fun. Once that's done I put some isopropyl alcohol onto the area that I'm going to be gluing. And that seeps through and that allows the watered down PVA glue that I then drip in place to then go wherever I need it to and once that's dry none of it will fall out from the smallest bit of powder to the chunkiest piece it'll be absolutely fine. What I need to do now is add the brakes to the loco end and what I got hold of was a Hornby tender driven um, brake set and I got this off eBay it was only a few pounds and you can unplug the the brakes from the chassis bottom it's it's not even uh, a whole chassis you get the bit that stops the wheels falling out on the kind of the, the non loco drive part so you take the brakes off and i basically snipped off the bits that had poked into the old chassis and put some glue on and stuck it to this chassis simple <laughs> nice and easy that i thought it was going to be much harder than all of that so i'm very happy so you'll find them on ebay if you want to do something like this for any other loco that you need this there probably are other sites to go to to also find things so i think this came from peter spares or something like that with this all done i need to add some couplings so then the duties of the dean goods can go ahead I used some of the Pico items which I normally use on my wagons which worked out really well. They basically stick in place and yeah, it's a block. You've got that nice triangular fit um, that the then I've got some backbone couplings that slots in place and we're good. Now with it complete, I can take some photos of it and I can use that for my thumbnail as well as put it on Instagram to share what I've been up to. After that we take it for a nice test drive on the layouts and enjoy the hard work that has gone into such a nice looking loco.
I think I'll try and get a few more of these locos. Might end up getting some of the Oxford um, ones that are out there. So that would be quite nice to have. But for now, I have this wonderful loco. As always, thank you for the support of my patrons and channel members. Your support has been a great help over all of these projects. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. I've been Tris, and this is Double O'Neill. Goodbye. <laughs>